One lawmaker who opposed the idea from the start uh, is Congressman Jeb Henserling, Republican of Texas, and he joins us now. Congressman, good morning to you. Megan, thanks for having me. All right, so you didn't make any secret of the fact that you did not like this bailout from the beginning. Do you like it any better now? Well, you know, it's the law of the land, and I recognize that as a, as a fact, but uh, no, it's still disturbing. You wonder where bailout mania will end. Uh, show me an industry that isn't struggling today. Uh, so how do we bail out some people, not bail out others? Clearly there's a financial crisis. Some form or fashion of the full faith and credit of the federal government was necessary. Uh, but I said in the first place this toxic asset purchase model, which is inherently political, uh, would not work and it appears the secretary is recognizing that as well. Yeah, I thought it was very interesting. Back in September you said, I'm concerned the federal government is becoming the lender and guarantor of last resort. I'm concerned the plan could fundamentally change the role of government in, in the American free enterprise system. Where does it stop? Because now on top of uh, the first bailout, you got Democrats pushing a second bailout, which we told could be between 300 and 500 billion, and you got Detroit asking for 50 billion uh, total of the taxpayers' money. Well, I don't know who's not knocking on my door today asking for some piece of the bailout. Again, everybody's struggling, and all of a sudden it becomes a political process. Some firms need to be allowed to fail so that other firms can be allowed to succeed. I mean, Detroit's fundamentally in trouble because of two reasons. Number one, they pay two-thirds more for their labor costs because they won't stand up to the big labor union bosses. And number two, they produce products that universally are at the low end of consumer satisfaction. And so they're producing high-cost products that consumers don't want to buy. And so now we have Washington on the verge of giving them a bailout simply because we've all heard of them and they have high-priced lobbyists in Washington. Yeah, so how, Listen, do you, how, do you how do you stop it? How do you stop it? you got a Democratic president coming in, you got big Democratic majorities uh, in the House, and it looks like they may be headed for a big one in the Senate, depending on how these remaining races uh, pan out. Can it be stopped? Well, elections have consequences, and the president-elect, and I offer him my congratulations, uh, he ran as a centrist. Now, his record is somebody from the hard left, but he ran as a centrist. Uh, I would hope that the people would let their voices be heard, uh, that it's the small business people. They're the ones who create the jobs around America. I mean, with that $50 billion that's aimed at Detroit, uh, the average small business is capitalized with $25,000. You could create 2 million new small businesses in America. If you're going to dole out cash to somebody, dole it out to small businesses. Don't dole it out to a failing Detroit. And if we give it to Detroit, I mean, isn't it just going to be a laundry list of people coming in one after the other of industries saying we're in trouble too, we're important too, and there are a lot of important industries that are in trouble. Where does it stop? Where do you think the Democrats would say it stops? <laughs> well, that's an excellent question. I don't think they would ever believe it stopped. They seem to have an insatiable appetite uh, for uh, borrowing money from the Chinese and sending the debt to our children and grandchildren. As the father of a six-year-old and a five-year-old, I'm not going to sit idly by and let that happen. I'm going to raise my voice. But listen, elections have consequences. The Democrats clearly won in November, and now the people will have to watch closely and let their voices be heard. Do they want all the big businesses is bailed out at the expense of all the struggling school teachers and farmers and ranchers and small businessmen? Uh, I think not. If you lose your ability to fail in America, soon we'll lose our ability to succeed. I don't want the government bailing out and running every business in America. Congressman Jeb Henserling, who said months ago, and I quote, I am concerned that this plan will put the taxpayer on the hook for a trillion dollars and still might not solve the problem. Seems uh, you may have been on to something there, Congressman. Thanks so much for joining us today. I think I was right. Thanks for having me. We appreciate it. Uh -huh.